Dubai for you is associated with? Success, actually. Uh, Dubai is always, Success. yeah, prides itself of yeah. being the best place in the world. Welcome to the Encrypted Podcast, your gateway to the future of technology and innovation, right here in the heart of Dubai's dynamic tech universe. I'm your host, Maria Vovchok, and together with Dubai Blockchain Center, we are embarking on a journey that unravels the minds of tech visionaries through the digital frontiers that are shaping our world. Today, our guest is Dr. Marwan al -Zaruni. Strategic Advisor at Dubai Department of Economy and Tourism, CEO at Dubai Blockchain Center. Dr. Marwan is a prominent authority in the field of blockchain technology, an internationally recognized blockchain tech advocate, and a keynote speaker who has been ranked by Cointelegraph as one of the top 100 most influential people worldwide in blockchain. When he has free time, he enjoys playing football. Is that correct, Dr. Marwan? 100%. What else uh, probably our audience should know about you that maybe I haven't mentioned so far? I started uh, learning about uh, technology at a very young age. I started when I was eight to mm -hmm. learn about programming. We had something eight. called, yeah, eight years old. You were already programming. My uncle bought a computer called MSX, which uh -huh. is uh, uh, at that time was in Arabic as well. Mm -hmm. So it had Arabic games, had Arabic uh, content and a programming language that was uh, actually in Arabic. So it was very accessible for us and games as well and that kind of stuff. And that got me also into gaming very early on. And gaming. then, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like playing game, not developing games. But then one of the first games that I developed myself was this AI kind of uh, machine that actually speaks to you in Arabic and really? pretends to be a human. Yeah, ask you what's your name and then tells you that its name is Sakhar, for example, and uh -huh. then continues to talk to you as a normal human being. So uh, you were you were at the time eight years old, right? Yeah, eight until I think I was 13 or something like this. I was uh, programming in Arabic. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's really impressive. Dr. Marwan, you're also holding a degree in cybersecurity. So how does this experience inform your perspective? So uh, for me, I think cybersecurity uh, uh, lets you think in a different way than a normal uh, human being or an engineer, for example. Uh, cybersecurity uh, lets you look at different aspects on how you can exploit a new technology, what are the weaknesses in this technology, and also how do you mo make the most out of it. Hacking actually does not mean cutting corner. Hacking make, me, actually means do, doing something at the, in the shortest possible way with the shortest code and the most optimized uh, piece of code and also discovering all the boundary conditions within a, a certain piece of code. So it's, it's also uh, lets you go much lower and dig deeper in the technology and deep tech kind of uh, perspective is important when it comes to understanding the value of any kind of technology, whether this is blockchain or AI or uh, internet technology or any other kind of technology, whether it's uh, physical like electronics or software mm -hmm. that, that, like we see, for example, any kind of software implementation. So I think this is uh, the best way I can put it, uh, how we can use and the perspective that, that cybersecurity brings to uh, somebody who has a programming degree or kind of you know aviation degree or any other kind of discipline. By the way, it's very interesting because I remember clearly that, like we spoke about this earlier, that you also invested in web domains like from the early days. Yes. And actually one of the things that right now you're also thinking to bring here, more companies, they're working on decentralized domains. So one of the things that the, probably we can already announce that you're also organizing Domain Days conference. Can you please tell us about this? Yeah, so I noticed uh, actually uh, since uh, moving from Australia to, to Dubai after my, my uh, master's and PhD, is that this space, like that AE domain name was not developed and there was not a huge value of that AE domain names. But uh, with the advent of, of the companies that actually moved to Dubai mm -hmm. and uh, more of them, uh, like uh, almost immediately as soon as they set up shop in Dubai, they get a .ae domain names. The value of those domain names went higher. Mm -hmm. And I noticed also that worldwide there are, there are events for domain names, but there, were nothing, there was nothing here. Even though in every other aspect of technology, there was a lot of uh, domain, I mean, a lot of 
uh, domain specific conferences, but there was nothing for the actual, no pun, in, no pun in den, intended here, domain name conference. Yeah. So I partnered with uh, uh, AE Server, which is the, one of the top domain name uh, companies here in, in the UAE. And uh, we started as an idea first, but then now we are realizing that in November as the first conference of that nature in the whole region, actually. I believe that everybody who's watching us right now, you should definitely check it out. So you can tell the dates, when exactly the event? It's, uh, it's uh, the 1st of November, so it starts in November. And it's actually uh, called, uh, the website is domaindays.com. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Marvan, as you said, and this is really interesting, how you're all the time at the forefront of people who are actually looking into emerging technologies. And obviously one of them is everybody's talking about is blockchain technology. How did you initiate the Dubai Blockchain Center? Because uh, the idea was to educate people and you were at the core as well of, uh, of the center to uh, appear in the Middle East and to help people to understand it better. I think, I think when we started the Dubai Blockchain Center, we were actually starting on, the, again, the, the, on the shoulders of other people who started similar centers around the world. And we found out that there's a gap uh, mm -hmm. in, in the market over here as well. And as well as there was a gap in education around blockchain and what is the value from blockchain. In the early days of the internet, I did the same thing. We started something called Emirates Internet Association to help people know the value of the internet at that time. Same thing right now with the Dubai Blockchain Center to understand what is the value from blockchain, actually help people develop the projects with the value of blockchain at the core of what they're doing. Uh, blockchain brings three types of value. Of course, the, the value exchange is number one, and then smart contracts is number two. And then number three is actually uh, creating blockchains that enable people to really uh, transform and uh, notarization, uh, record keeping, as well as provide a single source of truth. A lot of people do not understand the value of blockchain and think that blockchain will solve all their cybersecurity problems or record keeping problems. It is not a one-stop solution. It is a tool and it only can help you to the extent of what that tool is be useful for. As far as the global Web3 community is growing, uh, why do you think the global web community, they should keep an eye on Dubai? I think Dubai always standard for, for technology adoption, for really rolling out uh, a solution for a problem in a very systematic way. And I think the track record of Dubai uh, speaks for itself. When it came to the internet, for example, we have one of the highest penetrations anywhere in the world, mobile phone uh, and smartphone penetration as well, one of the highest around the world. Uh, happiness and city indices around the world and standard of living as well. We have one of the highest in the world as well. Connectivity when it comes to airline access, logistics, uh, when it comes to the ports, when it comes to everything else. I think Dubai sets the example of, of how to really optimize the, and utilize different aspects of technology, positioning, as well as other you know, economic aspects as well. Um, we are a, a, a a community that prides itself on tolerance as well. Mm -hmm. We do not speak of tolerance, but we actually implement it. Yes. So, so it's always embedded in our DNA to really welcome everybody and really give people opportunity to grow and really start their company, uh, learn, and, and literally do anything that they dream of uh, based here in Dubai. Dubai, home for innovations. Actually, you've mentioned in one of your previous interviews that one of your goals is to make UAE and Dubai in particular a leader in blockchain innovation. And uh, as you mentioned already earlier, Dubai Blockchain Center is contributing to that a lot. But maybe you can also like share with us some success stories that you had earlier that you also helped to bring big tech, big web free companies, big tech companies to Dubai. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to mention names, to be honest. Maybe uh, you can share the story, maybe without mentioning names. Yeah, so, so we helped a lot of uh, uh, Web3 companies move here, uh, as well as a lot of the big exchanges, as well as the consultancies related to them, uh, VCs related to them as well. The whole idea of the Dubai Blockchain Center and the whole idea of Dubai is to create 
an ecosystem for blockchain and cryptocurrencies in a way that no other country has attempted before. Set the standard actually of how you re regulate uh, in a new way and a new perspective uh, an industry that was extremely hard to regulate. When it came to things like the internet as well, the, mm -hmm. Dubai set the, the rules. We created the world's first Dubai, you know, internet city was the world's first uh, of its really? kind, kind of internet city. Yeah, apart from, you know, Silicon Valley, which was, uh, you know, a San Francisco kind of DNA uh, setup. Uh, this was purpose built from the ground up, uh, free zone for internet companies. Yeah. Dubai Media City as well. Now with VARA, it's a regulator that sits from the ground up to not to peg square into a, a circle or, or try to fit crypto into the normal financial uh, you know, uh, regimes and regulations, but rather create from the ground up uh, a regulator that is actually built purpose-built for regulating this kind of industry and this kind of activities related to, to cryptocurrencies. By the way, how do you feel when people are already naming Dubai as like a Silicon Valley of the Middle East? It is very, very, very flattering, but I think and for us, it's not an end game. So for us, this is a continuous journey. For us, we always, whenever we get called this, we, uh, we actually strive for doing better. We always strive to, you know, not only see and get comfortable where, where we're sitting right now, but also try to discover what is the next frontier. And, and AI right now is one of those things that we're lit literally targeting right now as Dubai. As, as you've heard, a couple of days ago, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan announced the AI Assembly, yes. which is going to take place also in October, uh, which is less than a month uh, away. And uh, I think that's going to uh, sh showcase what Dubai is doing in the uh, AI space as well. But it's not in isolation from blockchain. It's not in isolation from metaverse and Web3 and other aspects of, of, of technology. So Dubai is the center for everything to do with, you know, looking forward and foresight when it comes to, to technology. Well, actually, as you mentioned about AI assembly, uh, this is one of the very, for me personally, one of the very exciting uh, events like to look forward to. But also what, like last year, there was metaverse assembly organized by Dubai the, uh, government by Dubai Future Foundation. This time it will be AI, AI Assembly. Last year there were like top metaverse companies. This time are you going to gather like top AI companies from around the world? Yes, 100%. Not only that, so we, we actually, AI is, the, the nice thing about AI is that AI is like uh, overarching everything. So you can use AI in everything from health to education to even metaverse. But they can Web3. also say blockchain you can use in every other sector as well. Mm, I, I, I beg to differ. I, I don't yeah. think blockchain value brings value at all sectors. Mm -hmm. It brings value much more in certain sectors than, than other, depending on the utility of, of blockchain. What aspect of blockchain you're actually taking advantage of in that sector and the financial sector it's a no-brainer because you have all three like you have exchange of value you have smart contracts and you have also record keeping and notarization mm -hmm. uh, and other aspects you don't get all three uh, benefits of blockchain so uh, but but with AI it's everywhere you can use it for learning you can use it for automation you can use it for for automating even physical world items and in, in Dubai we have an opportunity to really uh, cater for all aspects of AI, including mm -hmm. white collar based jobs, blue collar, and uh, across all all you know uh, walks of life, including research, including uh, optimization of work, mm -hmm. including discovering new frontiers, uh, including art and culture and things like that. So, so it's a, it's a, there's no no <laughs> uh, no limit to this kind of uh, possibilities. And I think AI assembly will be a really good uh, you know uh, melting pot for ideas around where we see AI is going. And of course, Dubai is, is prides itself in creating one of the first AI ethics committees around the world, being in the, the digital Dubai, uh, what used to be called at that time, Smart Dubai. And I'm proud to be a part of that uh, ethical committee as well. And use, the ethical use of AI is extremely important. And I think uh, in this assembly, we will shed light on that as well. And also hear from other people how they envision uh, a future with AI being uh, at the center of attention of this kind of frontier, uh, mm -hmm. which there's a lot of questions being asked as well as a lot of uh, possible scenarios uh, that can, you know, come out of AI. We can, like, in general, name Dubai not only AI, I would say, universe, but also tech universe, like, in, in general. 
what do you believe, um, and could you, in this case, like provide a snapshot of evolving tech communities and tech ecosystems in the region, maybe more broadly in the MENA region, and in this case in particular in Dubai? I, I think, look, I, I think there, there is no specific formula why Dubai is successful. I think there's a lot of uh, examples that we can give why Dubai is actually playing this role right now. Uh, Dubai prides itself always on, on being run as a business, number one. Number two, the we leadership. Can, we can say Dubai is like a business. Is run as a business. Uh, the, the, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed runs it as a CEO, so there's a book uh, uh, about that as well. And there's a lot of other aspects in Dubai that a lot of people don't see, and there's not enough, enough light shed on, is that Dubai is actually uh, one of the cities in the world where it prides itself on partnerships as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the projects that we do in Dubai, it's always a, a, a public uh, private partnership. Mm -hmm. It's all economic models that are very fluid. Uh, they're very, you know, not distinct, traditional. We always try to solve a problem in a lot of novel ways, a lot of inno innovative ways as well. Even the partnerships are done in different ways. Uh, that a lot of other uh, places and, and a lot of other uh, communities don't even think about. We do not have a box, so we don't say we're thinking uh, outside the box. There is no box in Dubai. We are thinking completely openly about all the possibilities. There's no possibility that's remote. Uh, we even have a ministry in the UAE called the Ministry of Possibilities. Ministry of Possibilities? Yes. That sounds very exciting because before there was, there was also Ministry of Happiness. Yes, there's Ministry of Happiness, there's Ministry of Possibilities. And the idea is that we do not peg ourselves to a certain, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of ideas. We do not think in a certain box. We do not think of our limits. Mm -hmm. Our limits is non-existent. The, uh, people say the sky is the limit. And His Highness Sheikh Mohammed said, the sky is not the limit, the sky is the beginning. Yes. So we always have to think of with that kind of mentality. When you have great leadership that set the, the pace in that way, not only saying what, what is possible, but also leading by example and really realizing uh, what the potential of having this kind of mindset can lead you to, it's amazing. And it it's, it's really sets the pace for everybody in Dubai to wake up you know, trying to solve a problem, trying to think of a different way to solve any kind of barrier that they say face in life, whether it is on their personal basis or in their economic or, or situation or in their professional career, mm -hmm. not thinking about a position or the next place where they're going to go, but rather thinking of what is possible even outside of their, their you know, limitations. I totally support that, that regarding possibilities, Dubai has already like proved itself to be a place for different possibilities to be open to a lots, lots of entrepreneurs. And actually, uh, we can see that that's why Dubai for the last couple of years is like becoming a magnet for top Web3 companies, for investment banks, for asset managers, and more recently, hedge funds. Uh, who do you think will be next? Uh, only, only the future, only the future will tell. I, I cannot predict what's going to be next, but it's definitely going to be very exciting. So we have something called Dubai D33, uh, which is the Dubai Economic uh, Outlook 2033, mm -hmm. which is Dubai's vision for 10 years from 2023. And it, it, it has 100 different initiatives. It has 10 different focus areas, and it aims to double the GDP of Dubai. So a lot of the... Uh, projects and a lot of aspects within that kind of uh, strategy is related to tech, mm -hmm. including uh, clean tech, including uh, things like sustainable manufacturing, including creating new jobs, including increasing the talent that is available to Dubai, including attracting new talent to, to Dubai, including creating uh, new corridors with countries and regions and cities that we haven't done business with uh, before. So again, with the same mentality, that there is no limits. We always are exploring with others are fighting or, or competing over, over certain regions. We're actually discovering new regions and discovering new business ideas, discovering new frontiers that were not uh, apparent to us. It is a green field for us. The whole world is a green field. It's not uh, uh, you know, a field where we enter competitions. As I said, the difference in Dubai is working together rather than competing with each other. Encrypted is your exclusive ticket to the epicenter of technological innovation in the MENA region.
When you actually said about corridors and working with other regions, can you please as well share maybe about some uh, recent success, success stories of Dubai partnering with other cities, with other countries in the world? Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll give you a personal example. So, for example, I, I just came from a trip to five different uh, countries. Uh, <laughs> one of my first trips as an advisor for, for uh, the bike economy and tourism. And those regions were, were not on the radar. Some of them were you know, partners that we've had, but we forged new relationships with cities within those, within those countries that we had no relationship with mm -hmm. before or no formalized kind of you know, bilateral agreements with before. And from those kind of visits, we got new business coming in, uh, new visits coming in, whether they are from startups in that Which region. Which countries? May I know? Uh, one of them, for example, is, is Finland. And we went to this city called Tempere. Uh, Tempere, I've never heard of before, let alone visit, let well, alone guess. discover the kind of talent that they had there with, with their startups. It's one of the industrial cities in, in Finland that actually became a tech hub for Finland as well. So uh, it, is, it was really eye-opening for me, and I discovered through a, a, a conference that they've done, they've done about Web3 as well mm -hmm. over there, but I discovered things like uh, sustainable manufacturing, uh, recycling of, of, of materials uh, that, that can be used for logistics, for example. A lot of other things that even for us here in Dubai, we had no visibility over, and, uh, and uh, the synergies were amazing there as well. And that's one of the five regions. But, uh, you know, the, the, in every region we found a number of, of opportunities that uh, were really, really game changers when it comes to the uh, possibility of working together and improving the bias position and also putting those regions on the map for us as well as, uh, as shedding light on them for, for the whole world to see. So in this case, are you expecting more, uh, like, that they will be coming more often to Dubai and there will be some potential collaboration that maybe yes. you share with us? Yeah, 100%. So, so a number of them are coming uh, as startups uh, mm -hmm. uh, for JITEX. Mm -hmm. uh, so already uh, from the time we had the visits until now, we've had a couple of visits as well here uh, from all aspects of life, whether it's in tech or, or agriculture or manufacturing or even events and technology as well. So uh, we'll, we'll have delegations, also official ones coming in as well in October. Uh, also from Finland, from uh, Europe in general, so the five different regions I, I visited, uh, mostly in Europe, <laughs> uh, with, except, with, with the exception of Morocco. So uh, I, I don't know if you know, but we had JITEX in Morocco for the first time as well. That was a huge success as well. Uh, and a lot of the companies that were in JITEX were actually investors from across the, 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 the world, including the US and Europe as well. So uh, Africa is an amazing uh, you know, uh, frontier as well for a lot of these investment companies. And the gateway to Africa is actually Dubai. A lot of people don't realize a lot of the companies in Africa actually opened their headquarters in Dubai after a certain growth kind of uh, scale and uh, they scale up out of Dubai. Uh, when you actually mention like that there are plenty of conferences in Dubai and I have even heard that Dubai is called like the worldwide capital of conferences. Is it like at the same time as well a gateway for companies to come understand uh, what possibilities Dubai brings and then set up one of the headquarters here? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, so we have an initiative in uh, Dubai Economy and Tourism called uh, Invest in Dubai. Uh -huh. And that's a portal right now. And we're actually continuously revamping this portal mm -hmm. and providing more services as we speak. This basically, literally uh, uh, provides you with a one-stop shop, a single window kind of approach to setting up a business in Dubai, uh, getting all your affairs in order, the smooth transition into Dubai, whether it is finding schools for your kids, uh, uh, settling in Dubai, finding an apartment or, or housing and other things like buying a car, all the different journeys, even in digital Dubai, there's a lot of different digital journeys that uh, make sure that the friction of you moving to Dubai is at a minimum. By the way, when you actually uh, mentioned about your uh, experience in cybersecurity, for me, it was really interesting whether we would see in the future as well one of the, um, one of the gatherings of cybersecurity specialists. I remember uh, back in 2018, I visited my first cybersecurity summit at the time. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that uh, as far as you're already initiating some of the conferences, they have never taken place in Dubai. There are plenty of blockchain web free conferences. There is no one on domain. Uh, domain days conference. 
do you think that there is a possibility that you also will initiate one of the cybersecurity specialist gatherings? We have actually. So we've done a number of them. Oh. So we've hosted Hack in the Box here in Dubai in the past. Okay. We've hosted the Black Hat as well, which is one of the world's biggest. Uh, I still haven't visited that one. I should definitely do. <laughs> and uh, also more recently, uh, JISIC, uh, JISIC. JISIC, which is a Gulf Information Security Exhibition and Conference. Uh, so DESC, which is the Bioelectronics Center, is the main sponsor for that event. I actually sit on the board of that conference as well. By the way, if I'm I, if I'm correct, there was a cyber challenge a while ago that you set up together with Dubai Electronic Security Center. What was the ch this challenge about? It is look uh, every year we do different kind of challenges, hackathons, and a lot of other events to keep our community engaged. Mm -hmm. Uh, including we created actually something called the uh, Cyber Innovation Center, which mm -hmm. is a permanent uh, kind of academy and also cyber range mm -hmm. for uh, the public and private sector. It's open to everyone. It's uh, again one of those examples of the PPPs, which is a uh, public-private partnerships uh -huh. uh, that we have government and private sector to create something that helps and serves the community. So the Cyber Innovation Center is a partnership between the Dubai Electronic Security Center and Thales, which is a French uh, uh, technology company, uh, which is huge actually in, in Europe as well. Uh, and the Cyber Range is one of those success stories. So it has a CISO program, which is Chief Information Security uh, officer program. It has a lot of other uh, smaller boot camps, uh, uh, other educational content, and, mm -hmm. and even uh, summer camps for kids. Uh, all the stuff during uh, the whole year, we have a full calendar of events as well, uh, not only within the, uh, the institute, but also outside. I believe that definitely everybody who's watching us, because you said like there, it's possible for everyone to enroll, Everybody who's watching us, they should definitely uh, find it. Or maybe, how can we help them to find uh, it? Just uh, Google Cyber Innovation Center. Cyber Innovation Center. Uh, by the way, when you told me that, I'm right now really curious myself, like to enroll it and to try it out. Uh, Dr. Marvan, from your experience, you've been an entrepreneur like multiple times. You're a serial entrepreneur. You're also a government official. Like, you've done, how many businesses have you already built? I have no idea. I have a hard time even you keeping... you started already <laughs> when you were eight years old, because you were already like planning, probably you had a vision, like what you would like to try and maybe to build and maybe then build a company. So if you have already built, like how many did you count or not? No, but, but I, there's a number of companies that I've actually exited as yeah. well. There's companies that I'm partners with mm -hmm. as well. So, and some, some of the companies I'm advisor with. So it depends. It's, it's, it's uh, none of, uh, you know, uh, the things that I, I, I got involved in without being passion, passionate about it. And I don't get involved in anything unless I, I can add value to it as well. So it's not the number that matters. I think, I, I think it's what impact does this company have on Dubai, for example, number one. UAE number two and also the world number three. And, and, and you've heard that I uh, was one of the most influential people in crypto. That's for a reason, you know, and this impact that you have in the world, I think is what people will remember you by. The number of companies and that kind of stuff, nobody will remember this. Dr. Maron, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll move on because when we spoke about you as an uh, entrepreneur, Let's right now uh, help our audience to find out about you more as a person. And for this, we will move on to our fireside chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rapid fire questions. This will be very quick, but this is for our audience to get to know you better as a person. So let's start. Okay. All right. Um, so what excites you the most right now? I think AI uh, in, in healthcare more specifically is uh, mm -hmm. one of the most exciting things right now. Okay, your biggest lesson that you learned so far as an entrepreneur? Listen uh, to, to your instinct, first of all, and okay. then uh, listen to, uh, for advice from people you don't expect to get advice from. Okay, uh, name five qualities additionally that you believe a real entrepreneur should have. Uh, financial management, number okay. one. Uh, number two uh, is uh, uh, patience. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of the ideas uh, come only with patience. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, uh, good partners, uh, have young people within uh, the company, mm -hmm. as well as uh, really uh, control and try to pivot your project uh, in a way that makes it successful. What would you never do while building a company? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I li never listen to people who put you down. I think uh, it's always a, a, a good idea to ignore these kind of people because you know what you want and you know exactly how you're going to do it. Uh, biggest misconceptions that people have about Web3? I think the un understanding the value of Web3, a lot of people misunderstand it. I think it's going to happen faster than it's, it's going to happen. And, and uh, it is in Web3, I think the value realized from Web3 will not be uh, achieved within five years or 10 mm -hmm. years. I think, I think a lot of people misconceive that it's going to happen in less than a year or so. So, so be patient. Be as patient. Well. Coming yes. back to that. Yes. Uh, Dr. Marwan, uh, since you are a very famous keynote speaker, how many times do you practice your keynote before going on stage? I do not practice the keynote per se. I practice usually only the idea or the message I want to deliver. And I think uh, being very verbose about the keynote does not give it you know, the genuinity uh, versus you actually understanding the idea that you want to deliver. Dubai for you is associated with? Success, actually. Uh, Dubai is always, Success. yeah, prides itself of yeah. being the best place in the world to, to live, uh, to work, and to achieve big things. Yeah, thank you. Um, describe right now a perfect day for you. I think every day should be a perfect day. I mm -hmm. think every day you should strive for it to be a perfect day. No matter how bad that day for you looks like, you should always, you know, try to inject some kind of activity or some kind of a call maybe to some uh, long-time friend or somebody you haven't gotten in touch with or mm -hmm. challenge yourself by learning a new skill or a new sport or even could be as nice as even reading a new book or listening to a new podcast. Oh, nice. Thank you. Uh, your biggest aim to achieve right now? I think uh, my biggest thing to achieve right now is making the world a better place, improving the life of somebody. It could be one person, it could be a community, it could be the whole world. Yeah. Uh, what are you working on or how do you spend your free time? Learning. I always love, love to learn and I learn by doing. So I always spend a lot of time on technology and trying to learn something new. And right now I'm setting up laptops and new mobile phones with new operating systems as well. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. So which is the next big tech trend to follow? I think AI is, is, is good. Uh, it's, it's very, very rapidly moving. And I think in new areas, AI could be a game changer. Like health tech? Health tech is one of them. And also uh, things like manufacturing. Uh, uh, I think could be huge, hugely impacted by AI. Your personal formula of success? I think uh, uh, resilience is important, and I think uh, drive and focus are important as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Today we have Dr. Marwan Alzaruni, Strategic Advisor to the Dubai Department of Economy and Tourism and CEO at Dubai Blockchain Center. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time. Thank you for having me. From the gleaming skyscrapers of Dubai to the innovation hubs of the Middle East and beyond, Encrypted brings you thought-provoking discussions, exclusive insights, and stories of innovation that will leave you inspired.